it sort of takes the regular hot dog and moves it up several notches. Hey, hi everybody, it's the Papa from the Papa's Kitchen. I'm with the Nana. She's got her apron on, so good things are gonna happen around here today. Um, we're doing this video, it's gonna have about four or five different um, little hacks or recipes on it. I think about four. I'm doing a coleslaw, a, a white Alabama coleslaw. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing that a, was good, uh, by the that way. was very good. I'm doing uh, a hot dogs and a puff pastry. Those are wonderful. Uh, what else? Oh, I'll talk about this in a second. What else? I did something. Oh, else. you uh, took the oil, the leftover oil that we had used in the mm -hmm. cheetah risotto. Yeah. And you showed them how to store it. Oh yes, that's right. It's right exactly. And then, so a little different. I things. think there was something. There was else. something else, and I don't remember, but. At the beginning of this video, we're wanting to do... Oh, croutons. Oh, I made croutons, that's yes. right. At the beginning, and it was with that oil. Yes, the yeah. oil and also leftover bread yeah, that was exactly. going to go bad, so we made them croutons. At the beginning of this video, though, we're wanting to do a recipe that is actually my mother's. And Susan reminded me of it. It's a quick, is it like a quick lasagna? Is that? Yes, well, we're, we're taking two recipes and putting them together. Oh, we are, okay. One is one I did all the time, and it was from a Pillsbury cookbook that I got in the grocery store years ago. Okay. And it was called Lazy Lasagna. Okay. So that one was no cooked noodles. Okay. Your mother's had cooked noodles. Okay. So this was, a, this is kind of a shortcut to do your mother's, but it's even used, we're using noodles I've never yeah. used before. So. I, um, I, buy, I buy these, these are lasagna sheets, pasta sheets, and I buy them fresh from uh, uh, Doris's market here in town, and I love them. I like pa the pasta they do. I have my own pasta machine now, so I make a lot of it, but I don't make this stuff, and this is really good. So I had some left over, and I thought this would be a great recipe. We've got ricotta cheese, We've got uh, shredded uh, Parmesan, right? Is that yes. what you're using this? Mm -hmm. uh, I've got some parsley. And what I did here, well, you can tell them what we did here. Well, we're cleaning out our freezer mm -hmm. and fridge. So this, he made um, spaghetti sauce a year ago. Yeah, it's been a and while. It's been Froze in the freezer. It. Mm -hmm. And I saw it, I go, whoa, let, what can we use it for other than just yeah. spaghetti? Yeah. And so we're making a small lasagna. Okay, yeah, this is like an eight by eight yes. or nine by nine. And it should be very quick if you've already got your sauce made. Yeah, well, okay, and the sauce has loaded, I loaded it with ground oh, meat. Oh, you did really so. good sauce. It's delicious, but you could also use just a canned spaghetti sauce if you want. Yeah. And it makes it just as well. That's what I used to do all the time. I was into short, shortcut cooking. Put your oven on at 350 because that's what it calls for. And I'm really nervous about this, really nervous, because, not because you're going to cook, because oh, yeah, you're I'm a sure good cook. I'm, cooking. I'm, I'm nervous because I'm going to be on the camera. So here we yeah. go. All right, so basically all we have to do is layer it. Mm -hmm. And that's the easy part. My arms aren't quite as long as yours, babe. So I'm putting it in just like a, this is like an eight by eight or something. Yeah. So on the bottom, you want to put sauce okay. to begin with. It makes it so easy when everything's already made yeah. and you don't have to take the time. So you could, you could do your spaghetti sauce ahead of time and it would be just as nice to use homemade spaghetti sauce or buy a can. <laughs> then after that, you want to put some cheese, some Parmesan cheese. You can use the, I used to always use the canned cheese. Yeah, the, the um, yes, sprinkle the, on. Yes, the powdered or whatever yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. You need more cheese, and, don't you? No, not on this, because oh, okay. then you also put ricotta cheese. Oh, that's and you right. put another yeah, yeah. layer. I'm cooking. I understand. I just You're love cheese. <laughs> so here, can you see in here? Yeah, I can actually. Okay, so really is it, these are huge noodles. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm just gonna layer them so they'll be thicker yeah. a little in the yeah, middle. Yeah, that'll be good. There you go. Put three. And then on top of that we're gonna put this ricotta cheese. And we probably don't need the whole thing because when you do um, a 9 by 13 you use the whole thing. Okay. And I, I think it might be too um, gooey oh. if I use it all. I don't know. 
we'll see what half looks like yeah. and then go. I'm a do as you go kind of person. You are. You're good though. You've yeah, done this right. for years. Do as you go. <laughs> I'm out of practice now. We have a chef in the house. <laughs> see, if I put too much more, it's just going to be No, I agree good. with okay. you. Yeah. This will be great. Yeah. Okay, that's that. And then I'll put parsley. So how many layers does this end up just being? Just two new, two layers of noodles. Okay. Okay. I never did parsley. That's too fancy. I know. But so. Oh, then I do noodles again. Yeah. See, it's been forever since I've uh, made this. Oh, well, you're doing great. <laughs> I do some more of this. Okay. And sauce. The so only ricotta. one time ricotta. That's what I remember. Okay. I mean, everybody does it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and some, instead of ricotta, they use cottage cheese, I know. So which you want to end like. with your sauce on the top. Yeah. That's what you want to end with. With mozzarella cheese. That's what you didn't oh, get out. Oh, I've got some. So yeah. get out the mozzarella okay, okay. cheese. Yeah. That's what goes on the top. Okay. This doesn't take very long to cook here because everything's pretty much cooked. Yeah. And I did it with um, noodle, uncooked noodles. And it was just as easy. Honestly, they cook. I was shocked, but they do cook. Yeah. When I learned how to cook it without cooking the noodles mm -hmm. first, I started making this all the time. This When we had company, we had lasagna, if mm. you remember, right? A lot of people do that. Okay, and here's your mozzarella. Okay. All made up. Thank you, mm -hmm. sous chef. That's what my job is. I do this. I've served you all my life, all 40. <laughs> All 49 years of marriage. I'm just, I'm a servant. Yes, you are. Yes. Oh, Sue, that really looks good. There you go. So then that oh, melts all God. over it. Yes. And oh, and then more parsley on top just to finish it off. I'm done. Oh, come on. I used it all in. Oh, come on. Oh, just a little. Yeah, just uh, a little. Oh, there you go. Oh, goodness sake. See? Beautiful. Okay, we'll see what this tastes like. Okay. You think it'll be good? I think it'll be excellent, and I'm anxious to have uh, a late lunch, early dinner with yes. you, and I'm going to make a salad, and it'll be great. Oh, my goodness. Looks pretty good. It looks wonderful. Wow. Smells good, Susan. too. This is always the nervy part for me, Sue, is getting is. this out. Well, the first one out. when people are watching you. I know it. I know it. <laughs> yeah, a few people watching me here. Well, if it messes up, don't worry about it. it oh, it's looking great. Yeah, look, the layers Oh, my goodness sake. Oh, my goodness. It's going to fall job. over a little. But Do see what happens one. when you put a lot of peas, it gets a little gooey. Gooey, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I, I understand. The gooey or the better I like to that. me. Yeah. Oh, you did great. Yeah. Look, it just took a couple minutes yeah, to yeah, put it together. Absolutely. We, see, we had everything here. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. There we go. Beautiful. And Jerry made a beautiful salad. Got a salad with all ready for you. On oh it. yeah, that's right. And there you go, folks. You've got there it right go. there. You see it. Wow. Enjoy it. Make <laughs> people think you cooked all day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, I wanted to get sort of circle back with you and show you a few little tricks. Maybe yesterday I made this wonderful risotto, risotto sort of a fake or a, a cheap way of doing risotto cheap for time for sure, using rice and mushrooms instead of the risotto and the standing there and stirring and pouring and stirring and pouring in, uh, no, well, nothing. It was so easy, but it did require using quite a bit of oil. In fact, I ended up using a little bit over four cups of uh, olive oil uh, and I cooked those mushrooms, that garlic, thyme, rosemary that was in there, oh, two bay leaves. And I cooked it for probably 30 minutes and you cook it very low because you don't want the uh, uh, mushrooms to fry <laughs> so you're not boiling this thing and it, they turned out just beautiful in fact I did the pork loin I did an arugula salad with pears and then I did this risotto and that what I, my brother and sister-in-law were over that was the hit for all of us was the risotto it was so good and i've got leftover but i also had leftover oil and so what i do with that i want to just show you i've got here a strainer and all i'm doing is pouring a little bit of that oil into the strainer so that i'm not getting any junk in my oil 
and I'm letting that strain through like that and into my cup here and once that's done I take my and this had mushroom oil in it but it's empty and I'm going to pour this into this glass container and fill this back up with this mushroom garlic infused oil which smells right now absolutely out of this world it just smells delicious it tastes like crazy good and you can use it just about anything I mean this would be good if you're going to maybe uh, sear some chicken or in, in fact I would use this without thinking twice on uh, some uh, steaks that I was going to cook in my cast iron and just grill up some steaks. This is the perfect oil for that. Can you see how much is in that container? Yeah, I can see it coming up. So I can okay. look down and see dark. a little bit. It's yeah, it's hard to see. You know why they do that dark, I read, is because light affects the oil and oh. sort of causes it to grow old quicker. So they use dark, um, you'll, you'll see dark green bottles or dark bottles or yeah. No glass kind of bottles and all that. Do you want me that. to help you there? Why, my hand shaking? Yes, it is. I Looks know. like you're playing the cello. Oh, <laughs> the, vibrato. the violin. <laughs> the vibrato on the violin. I would be an excellent candidate for good vibrato there. there. And so that's it. So what to do with this oil becomes the question. Well, you can do a lot of things. But another thing that Susan and I love, and she cut up some bread the other day, uh, that we weren't going to use and I'm going to make croutons because we love croutons in our salad and we eat quite a bit of salad. I've got the bread all cut up into probably one inch to half inch cubes. I like my cubes a little bit bigger. My oven is set at 375 um, and we're going to bake it. We're going to put it on this sheet with this parchment paper and first off what you're going to do is you're going to coat everything with oil. And so I'm going to use that mushroom infused, garlic infused uh, oil, and we're going to coat this. And we're just going to run it like this. And I sort of want, I like a nice uh, flavor on my croutons. I'm just not looking to add bread to my salad. I want a nice flavor. And that's why uh, putting this oil in here and uh, flavored oil and then salting and peppering it, it's going to actually just turn out great. You know what? I'm going to use my hands. I can tell then when everything is moistened up here. Oh, beautiful. And these are going to bake just great, get nice and hard. And then I put them back in a bag and you can store them and they're going to stay good for a while. Now we're going to put some uh, pepper and some sea salt on them. But can I tell you, you can do a lot of things with croutons and I sort of pulled out my seasonings just to show you what else you could do. I don't think I'm going to use any of these. I might use a little bit of the basil, but we'll see. But basil, dried basil, you can sprinkle on before you make them. Thyme, dried thyme, garlic powder, onion powder, or even dried oregano is gonna be good. And actually that would be better even. I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna run in here with a lot of pepper. And we're gonna add the sea salt all the way through and then I'm going to actually stir this again and keep going a little bit further. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of oregano. I like that flavor on these and I think that'll be good. Uh, you can do Italian seasoning on it. You could do a number of different things. I've even got some spices from Golden Steer that I could put on there if I wanted to. But just making it sort of simple and uh, we're going to turn it over here at least once, maybe twice and then get ready to bake it. So let me get it all finished up for you and I'll show you how we put this on the sheet and then cook them up for about 15 to 20 minutes in a 375 degree oven. You can see I'm all ready to go. Everything's laid out. Everything I can tell looks pretty well oiled uh, and seasoned. Let me just, I still I'm always a little cautious. I want salt and I want to be able to taste the salt. There we go, a little bit more and of that. You added more oil. And I'm added a little bit more oil, but I want everything coated. And because it's sort of darker, and there's about two or three kinds of bread in here, all that was homemade. There we go. So 375 oven at 15 to 20 minutes until they get really they're sort of hard and crispy is what I like. So that's how we would do it. Just pulled my croutons out. They went the full 20 minutes because we like them 
uh, crunchy but soft. Now, how do you explain that? They're a little chewy. They're chewy on the mm -hmm. inside, mm, but love that. crunchy on the outside. Great taste. I mean, it turned out just wonderful. So there it is. It's a perfect, perfect crouton. Mm. If you've never made croutons, do it. <laughs> hey, hi. Let me give you another little fun little thing with coleslaw, which I really enjoy coleslaw, but it has to be made good. I'm not the big fan of the vinegary coleslaw. I like the creamy a little bit better. And a take on coleslaw is called Alabama white coleslaw. Very popular down south. In a small bowl, what I'm going to suggest you do is take about a little bit more than a third cup, a heavy third cup of um, mayonnaise. And I'm just measuring it out for your sake. I would just sort of eyeball it if I were you. But just like about like that. There we go. If you got the 16 ounce package, do a full half cup. Were there bigger packages there? I didn't see any. I think everything, they're making them. They're making now. everything smaller. It's just driving me yes, insane. They are. They're making them I smaller. I bought crackers the other day. I couldn't believe the little box that came in and how much they were charging. It, they're charging for what used to be the right. what I call the regular size. Yeah. It just don't even get me started. It makes me so mad. And then what you would need to do, and this will, oh, let me do this first. Apple cider vinegar. Put in two tablespoons if you're doing the full amount, but I'm going to do about a tablespoon and a half of apple cider vinegar. And then take and put in, oh, one or two dashes of uh, Who's Your Sister sauce. Really, it, more than a dash. I guess just call it uh, one or two teaspoons. That's about right like that. And then two t tablespoons of good horseradish. Not the creamy type, but the hot, hot stuff really good and I won't do quite as much because Susan doesn't like oh, real hot. You don't? No, no, I mean you can take it easy though. Okay, I'll take it easy. <laughs> don't do it too much Alrighty. just because I said that. And then in addition to that just a few dashes of, of cayenne pepper to bring it up to speed and then some salt and pepper and you're going to be all set. A bit more salt and we're going to put some pepper in there. And then give this a good whisk, a good stir. And before you get it poured into your slaw, take a moment to um, test for salt and pepper, or for horseradish too, for that matter, or for any other thing. Hmm. Oh, is that ever good? That is really good. And just pour it into your slaw, and get this all mixed up. And I don't know where you're from, but down here they put slaw on top of uh, hot dogs, which I'm going to make. In fact, I'm going to do it with this. Show you a little tr twist on hot dogs as well. They uh, also, you'll put it on a, oh man, I like if you did a, uh, a uh, chicken sandwich, you know, hot chicken sandwich with chicken tenders or whatever. Or shredded uh, pork. Shredded pork, or... fish, and yeah. it's all good. And then just mix it around in there and get, make sure everything gets covered. And honestly, the best way for this to work, and this is what I'm doing, is to do it early enough so that it saturates overnight. And boy, when you pull it out tomorrow, it's going to be absolutely delicious. In fact, I don't think I'm going to wait till overnight. <laughs> I think I'll have to think about what to do here. If we want to wait on the hot dogs till tomorrow, or do them yet tonight. But whatever way, you won't know and it won't matter to right. you. <laughs> so anyhow, there it is. And that's the Alabama white coleslaw. I like trying foods that are common, but with a twist on them. And that's actually what I'm gonna do uh, with the uh, hot dogs as well. I'm not the biggest hot dog fan, but I'm gonna put a little twist on it and I think you and I will both enjoy it. So, hey, hi, again, um, getting dinner ready tonight and uh, I wanted to give you a little that's my oven. It's set at 375 and I'm going to bake something in it. I'm showing you little uh, meals and little tricks and all that kind of stuff on this video. One of the neatest things, I bought about a 12 pack, I think it was, of hot dogs. Not too long ago, they were on sale at my market that I go, one of my markets I go to, and these are beef dogs. I'm not a hot dog fan per se, but I do like good beef dogs. It's got to be cooked right, the hot dog does, and I wanted to try something with you. Everybody's familiar with pigs in a blanket, and this is sort of a take on that. I've got 
here uh, some puff pastry that I pulled out of my freezer and I let it thaw. I want you to be able to see this Sue. This is sort of like a little idea I got from Ina Garten who's one of my favorite. Take the puff pastry and all you want to do is sort of get it all smoothed and rolled out a little bit. And we're going to actually instead of buns for the hot dogs, <laughs> we're going to make our own buns with these for these four hot dogs that I've got and we're going to do it out of puff pastry. I'm going to cut this right in half. It calls for having about four uh, four inches. That's about right by five and a half. Okay, so I'm a little little long, but I think I'm going to be okay. Actually, I'm going to play with this this way. And already, boy, these things, it doesn't take much for them to get um, a little soft and a little hard to manage. Yeah, you got to work hard. You got to work fast. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But we're going to do it here. And all I want you to do is we're going to take this first one like this, just show you, and we're going to do four of these just the same way. And I'm going to put some Dijon on the bottom part of this puff pastry. I'll show you what I mean. About a tablespoon, no, a teaspoon, excuse me, not a tablespoon, about a teaspoon on each one on the bottom. We'll do like that too, right like that, to the back of the spoon and just smear it along the bottom. And over here, I've got a um, uh, baking sheet with um, parchment. parchment paper, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> on it. I'm thinking what I'm doing here. I'm going to take this hot dog, and I'm going to roll this thing up over my hot dog and around. And we're going to put it just like this all the way. And I've got a little too much on the ends, but as you can see, but that's sort of the idea. And I'm going to just press it in. Yeah, I'll fiddle with this a little. I can do something better than that, I suppose, but right now. You fact, can wrap it like a Christmas gift. Yeah, I probably can. Take that off and we'll just go like this. <laughs> you want the whole hot dog covered, okay? And you want it all sealed up. So I just pinch it to seal it. And the seam is on the top here. And watch, all I'm going to do is take an egg and I'm going to... Um, put an egg wash on top of this, get my fork here, and actually with this add about a tablespoon of cold water, just like that, mix it up, mix that all up, and let me get my brush, I, you, you asked me if I had everything together <laughs> and I didn't, thinking. sorry about that, put the seal down, the part that's sealed, put it on the bottom, just like that and brush this egg wash all over the top and on the sides just like this because this will brown up just beautiful the only other thing I'm going to do is on top of this I'm going to um, also put some coarse uh, sea salt that I have on good. top and that'll really make this good mm -hmm. Just like that, a little bit of that. Now I'm gonna do three more, and you don't have to watch that. On two of them, because Susan wouldn't like this, but on two of them, I'm going to actually put some onion in my roll-up. I like onion, and I love onion on hot dogs. That's the Detroit coming out inside of me or something like that. We used to get those Coney Island things, and I always got them with onion. Along with that, I made yesterday, and I showed this to you, and it stayed overnight, it's just great very tasty it's the Alabama white coleslaw and that's ready to go so that's going to be our meal tonight and you can always put coleslaw on an open I don't think I can do it on this once it's cooked but on an open bun hot dog I, I put coleslaw a lot of times and eat it that way you do however you want in fact you know what I might do on uh, one of these I want to sort of experiment I'm gonna dump a little bit of shredded cheese inside and see how that does too but basically, that's how you're going to put them together. And listen, you're going to cook them in a 375 oven for between 25 and 35 minutes. You want them cooked all the way through, and you want these to get nice and brown on the outside. That's dinner, folks. A hot dog in a puff pastry. It sort of takes the regular hot dog and moves it up several notches. Try it and see, see what you get. I'll show it to you when I pull it out of the oven here in a little bit. Okay, look at this. They turned out beautiful. <laughs> they look different. They but did. They, they are gorgeous. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. So here's one for you. They're big too because those hot size. dogs are big. Yeah. That's great. I'm gonna don't. I'm gonna. That's your plate. I'm gonna 
put one of these others on mine, which is the uh, onion. Okay. <laughs> now then, watch this. You're gonna cut into it? I'm gonna cut into it. This is it. It's good. It's a quick dinner. It's a quick dinner, so try it out. Enjoy. 